out there. Even if you haven't signed up, you're hungry, you want to show up, just show up. It'll be great to have uh, folks out there as we uh, gather for our church uh, picnic. Uh, also, you'll see in the bulletin some different things that are listed. Uh, we are doing a Bible study on uh, Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m., 1st Samuel, so we invite you to come out and be part of that if you're able to. Also, next Sunday, we have an annual meeting uh, as a church, as United Methodist Church, we're part of uh, an, a larger conference, and so we kind of report up once a year. And so that report last year was over in the Ocean City Church. This year, it's going to be next Sunday, 3 o'clock, in the Cape Bay Courthouse Church. Uh, we're going there with some other churches, gathering, have a time of worship and reporting, and it's open to anybody who'd like to go. That's at 3 o'clock next Sunday afternoon. Uh, and then we have a bunch of things happening. The Trunk or Treat, which is at 6 p.m., if you like to put a car outside, it's rain or shine, be either outside or inside. Uh, contact the school, they're coordinating that. Have a bunch of cars out in the parking lot to do a trunk or treat on the, uh, on the 28th. Uh, we're having a breakfast again for men and women in the church on the 12th. Uh, Thanksgiving dinner is being planned at 5 p.m., just getting everybody together. So I hope you mark your calendar for that. And then the super big sale is coming up in December. So lots of, of different things that are occurring. Uh, in, we had getting together in the next uh, next few weeks. Again, getting back to some good fellowship, which is what we were hoping to uh, to accomplish again. Can I add something? Yes, please. Uh, as far as the trunk or treat, uh, all Sunday school families are invited as well. Uh, the Sunday school is going to have a car. So uh, please come out. Uh, there's a lot of candy for everybody. Yeah, so that's open to everyone. Right? Are invited. Open to everyone. You can have a car in it, or you just bring your kids. To it. Either way, everybody's welcome. Kind of being hosted by uh, the Learning Gardens. So we appreciate uh, their part in that. Uh, this last week, we had a lot of folks use our food pantry. And we're kind of, uh, if you get a chance, uh, if you've had a chance before, you're always welcome. After church, straight through these doors in the back there, it's a food pantry. 
You're always welcome to look and see what we have, and maybe you can see things we don't have that we should have and, and, and donate those things. But there's things each week we're trying to identify that we need, ketchup, toothpaste, and dish detergent, as you see listed there in the bulletin, and uh, any donations are greatly appreciated. Uh, I think we had six people in the last week or so come, and so it's been uh, it being utilized well, and so we praise God for that, uh, that opportunity. And I think that is all the announcements that we have. <coughs> no, it's not. Something else, I'm sorry, yes, I see the hand okay. Deb, something uh, else, yes. <laughs> Shoe boxes for anybody who's done American first shoe boxes are due back. Um, I will have them here for people to pick up next Sunday. Okay. So November twentieth. November twentieth. Okay. So I'm, I'll get that in the bulletin as well. The, the, the Christmas shoe boxes. And, and uh, does anybody not know what I, when she says Christmas shoe boxes? Who does not know what she's talking about? Anybody? Because I, they have videos and stuff. I can show videos to communicate what they do, and maybe I'll run one of those before the service next week as well, try to work on that, and just so people can see uh, what that is, where it goes, how it helps children around the world. Thank you, Deb. Appreciate that. Anything else? Did you come back refreshed? I am back, yes, thank you. Uh, very refreshed. It, it was an exciting trip to see friends and, and some family. I saw my brother-in-law and his wife. I uh, hadn't seen them in a long time. And so it was just a good, good trip uh, driving, taking the ferry. Anybody been on the ferry before? It's a wonderful trip. And it was kind of highlighted for me. I'll mention it now. Thank you, Doc. Uh, it was highlighted for me because on the way back in, there was this baseball game on, on, on the TV there. And this one catcher hit an in-the-park home run and was running the bases really, really fast. And so, and it was like being at the game because everybody on the boat's cheering at, at the same time. So it was kind of, a, kind of an interesting experience. But uh, yeah, it was great. It was a great time and, and glad to have that time with, uh, with some of my friends. So thank you. Let's stand together. I'm sorry, Don. No, uh, I just want to say Bob McCoy oh, got his car on Wednesday and he was just overjoyed to think that we're still thinking about him. Wonderful. It really meant a lot to him. Wonderful. I'm glad you got that. Glad you set that up, Dottie. And I'm glad you appreciate that. Amen. Let's stand together for our call to worship. God is in our midst, forming us to be God's own people. Every way it may be difficult, God will be with us. <clears throat> we need not fear. In the Lord we will take refuge, for God is our strength. Come the Lord who will surround you with God's own righteousness. Lord, open our hearts and our spirits so that we may faithfully follow you. Amen. Let's bow together in prayer. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you again for the privilege we have to be here. And we do ask that our minds, our hearts might focus on being here today. There are lots of other things happening in our lives. Lots of other things we may be looking forward to later. But Lord, may your spirit focus our spirit to be present in these moments now, that we might worship you in spirit and in truth, for you are worthy of our worship. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let's sing together number 92 in the hymnal. The words will be up here for the beauty of the earth.
our younger days, those that grew up in the church, uh, for those of us that maybe didn't grow up in the church, can remind us of songs or teach us some new songs. I have the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. And then you see the question mark, where? So it's supposed to be an interactive, like curious, yet participatory recognition song. So uh, let's see. There's no problem. I think so. <laughs> I have the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I have the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. So stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I
that we can know Jesus and grow in Jesus. May these children, God, understand how much you love them and realize the impact that Jesus can have in their lives as well. We ask all this in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. 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 All right, guys, got a lot of sun catchers. It's good to see you. Have a fun time today. I'm sure some of you had the experience of bamboo in your yard. Is that true? Yeah. Yes. And it's, uh, <clears throat> they don't understand the word invasive, but that is a pretty invasive kind of a thing. Uh, but we'll get there today as well. Any words of praise you have to share? Any good things been happening that we might celebrate together today? In a slow week, calm week. Yes, Carol. Phillies won. Phillies won, yes. We do thank the Lord for that. I, you know, I was... Uh, I was watching the game yesterday, and then last night I got tired. Uh, you know, the one game went to 18 innings. Did anybody see that? And and uh, and then the Dodgers lost. That was so sad for me. Um, but that means the Phillies have a greater chance to win the World Series. So I'm actually pretty happy. So, so uh, it, it is uh, it, it is interesting. You know, what's nice, Carol, about it is the fact that it keeps us interested in sports, particularly baseball. If the Phillies weren't in it, I probably would not be watching any of these games right now. So we're glad for that. Thank you. Anyone else a word of praise today? So I shared it was good to see friends, some college friends this last week, uh, and had a good time of, of fellowship with them. I thank the Lord for that opportunity. We're already planning next year, whether we go back to Georgia, they were talking about going to Maine. I'm like, wherever you guys want to go, I'll be there. That's fine. So, <laughs> so uh, but again, it was good to, good to spend time with them. Different things we need to keep in prayer. Um, I will ask again. I feel selfish at times asking for this, but but I want to let you know what happened. And, uh, keep my mom in prayer. Um, we had a conference call. My brother was able to be there. They set up for Friday. I was down in Georgia still um, uh, on Friday, and uh, they're going to have to. We're going to have to move her somewhere somewhere else. The uh, facility she's in has said that they cannot meet her needs. So that was a little bit frustrating. But uh, please keep my mom. And, Patience, because once she heard that, then she's like, you know, she's ready to go yesterday. I'm like, you know, it's now we need to find the best place. So my brother and I are trying to identify that. So please keep us uh, as well in prayer for that. Other concerns. We've been praying for Steve Elliott. We want to continue to keep Steve in our prayers. Yeah, Deb. Um, Bob Flood, he lost his wife for 53 years this week. And it was, his name was, it was Bob? Yes. All right, keep Bob in prayer. Yeah? I mean, I mean, uh, Bart? Tom's supposed to have a knee replacement if he passes his death. What's the date again, Tom? That's Thursday. Oh, this week. All right, Tom. All right. Keep Tom in prayer for the knee surgery, hopefully this Thursday, if anything works out. Gene. Prayers for St. Trevor on Thursday. Gene and daughter in prayers they travel. And you're flying, right? You say you're flying. Right. All right. And we'll keep you in prayer for that. Yes? Uh, prayers are traveling with Quinn and his friend and his dog. They're coming out from uh, I'm going to go to this. Okay. Traveling markets for Quinn. All right. Any others today? We go to the Lord in prayer then. Again, as we said, the altar is always open. If you want to come and lay any burden here uh, before the Lord. But let's sing our chorus together through it all. Thank you. 
in us, that you would send your son into the world to restore relationship, that that which was broken has been fixed, has been healed. We thank you, God, that you are not only a God in heaven, but you are God here upon this earth. We thank you, God, that you help us and that you're with us. And Lord God, that we can see so, so sometimes, God, our, we, we blind our own eyes, God, but we can see in the beauty of creation in your hand. We can see in the beauty of another human life the wonder, the awe, the fear, God, in which we've all been made. That we come to this world, God, as an infant, as a baby, and then we, we grow that someone cares for us and, and teaches us and, and clothes us and bathes us and provides protection for us and, and, and food for us and a place to, to sleep and all the things necessary for us to grow. And then God, we grow and sometimes we forget about all that was done when we were little. God, we thank you for this marvelous opportunity we have to be alive and to, to grow and to age, God. And sometimes we know we get frustrated and and we can't do physically what once we're able to do, and, and these bodies don't work the way we want them, God. But there is a blessing that does come with aging. The number of people that we're able to know, the experiences that we've been able to have, the, the places we've been able to go, the things we've been able to see. God, we thank you for the privilege we have to be alive. We thank you, God, for the privilege we have to be here. May we never think lightly, God, on who we are and, God, ultimately what you've done for us through Christ. May it never be commonplace in our lives. May we never take anything for granted, God. But as we gather in worship, God, let us be reminded, Lord, of your love and your mercy in our lives. That, yes, there's problems. Yes, there's conflict. Yes, there's difficulties. But, God, there's also joy in our hearts. That's where it is, God. Not somewhere else, but in our hearts, God. We can be joyful. Because we know we have a God that cares about us. That loves us. Our struggle sometimes, God, is the fact that we don't trust that. We don't believe that. We don't personalize that. May your Holy Spirit help us understand truth. And apply it to our lives in these days. May we see things that aren't true as untrue. And may we see your truth and cling to that and live in that and, and share that with others. Lord God, we pray for the needs mentioned today, many for travel mercies. We pray for safety for these that will be traveling, whether by car or by plane. As they visit family or friends or return home, God, just keep them safe. May they be an encouragement to all whom they meet. For those who struggle, God, with loss. Loss of a spouse, loss of a friend. Change in their lives, change in jobs, change in opportunities, God. Just give strength and give peace. I pray that my mom and just ask you to be with her through these days. Give my brother and I wisdom as we try to figure out what's next, what's best. And be with her, God, as she adjusts again to this, this process of, of aging and, and relying on others to do what once she was able to do herself. So we recognize, God, that we all will be there one day unless something else happens. May we be loving patients. May we be loving people to those around us, sharing your grace and mercy. Lord, we thank you for the ministries of this church. We thank you for opportunities to fellowship. If we have them later today at the picnic, just be with all that's happening in that moment, in those times as we share together around the table. We are so thankful, God, that we can fellowship with one another. We are so thankful, God, that no one is telling us what we can't do. God, help us 
Enjoy each moment of every day as we have breath in our bodies. For our coming procedures, for healing from procedures, continue, God, to bless and give hope. And now, Lord God, unite us as we pray the prayer that you taught your followers to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. The thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory of our Amen. I'm going to you to stand. Let's sing this hymn. We're actually going to make this our prayer for us starting next week. An older song, As the Deer.
But be blessed are your eyes, because they see me, because they see, and your ears, because they hear. I assure you, many prophets and godly people have longed to see and hear what you have seen and heard, but they could not. Now here is the explanation of the story <coughs> about the farmer selling grain. The seed that fell on the hard path represents those who hear the good news about the kingdom and don't understand it. Then the evil one comes and snatches the seed away from their hearts. The rocky soil represents those who hear the message and receive it with joy. But like young plants in such soil, their roots don't go very deep. At first, they get along fine. But they will, as soon as they have problems, are prosecuted because they believe the word. The thorny ground represents those who hear and accept the good news, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the cares of this life and the lure of wealth, so no crop is produced. The good soil represents the hearts of those who truly accept God's message and produce a huge harvest, 30, 60, or even 100 times as much as has been planned. Bow with me in prayer. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Last week we began looking at the parables of Jesus. We did kind of a, an introduction, if you missed that. Uh, but Jesus would go around making these, telling these stories, these parables, these comparisons of one thing that was known to something that was not fully known. And he often talked about that the kingdom of God, or the kingdom of heaven, is like. And we have another one of those today. And, and he spoke, we said last week, in parables because the audience, in this case today, there are so many people there. He gets on the boat, goes out into the water, begins teaching and speaking to them in these stories and parables. The audience was kind of a mixed audience. There were some there that were curious. They were seeking understanding. Uh, they, there were some there that were, were believed already and were following the things, the truth that he was speaking of. And there were others that were kind of just not receptive at all. They were, they were kind of argumentative. They were trying to catch him saying something wrong. But Jesus was growing in popularity. People were beginning to follow. And in those days, that's kind of what you did. You kind of went around and you, you followed people and listened to people. And he had a, a large following. And some others didn't like his popularity because if Jesus was being listened to, they might not be listened to. And again, Jesus then began to speak in these parables. Yet some people were kind of hard of hearing. They really weren't able to listen. Sometimes he would just speak and let it lie, at least in the recording of Scripture we have, no interpretation. Other times, like the one today, not only does he speak the parable, but to his disciples, we see later, they say, what are you talking about? And he says, here is what I meant when I said those things. It was told by Jesus in these parables, I think this one in particular, to illustrate different reactions people have to the truth. Different reactions people have to hearing the gospel. Now, we sometimes use fancy words like evangelism. Uh, we might even say, you know, describe as people coming to know Jesus, being born again, believing, following, being a disciple, witnessing, all these fancy words. But again, the different reactions people have when Jesus shares something that's true, who he is, what he's done, people respond differently. It's one of the parables that is actually mentioned in three of the books in the Bible. It's in Matthew, it's in Mark, and it's also recorded in Luke. And like I said, it's one that he gives interpretation for. The significance of this particular parable is enhanced by these words of, of Jesus from Mark chapter 4, verse 13. Do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand any parable? In other words, I'm going to be speaking to you in parables. You need to think. You need to use your reason. You have a mind to think. I want you to think through these things and understand what they mean. Now, in this case, he gets right into explaining to the disciples what the parable means. If you have your notes there, I kind of did a little bit of an outline and just kind of go quickly through this uh, today. First, the sower. 
The sower is the one who initiates the harvest. It, it's really Jesus. It, it's one who's proclaiming. It's one who's planting that seed, planting that message about the Son of Man, about who Jesus is. Anyone who plants that seed is a sower. And the seed itself, the seed itself is, is that message that the kingdom has come, that the kingdom of God is here, that the kingdom of heaven has come to earth. Matthew 13, 19 says, when anyone hears the message about the kingdom, the kingdom of God, and again, it's about relationships, it's the a, it's a good news, it's the, the gospel, it's what Jesus preached about, that life is more than you live and you die and that's it. The word of God is truth. It was an important element of all of his preaching. It's an important element of what makes the church needed in the world today because it is amazing how many people we might run into that actually say, that's all life is. You live, you die, and that's it. And we come and we say, listen, life is far more than that. Life has purpose. Life has meaning. Jesus says, that seed, that message, falls on different soils, on different people's hearts. He says sometimes it falls on first the, the, the path or the, the wayside. That soil represents one who hears and does not understand. They hear, but they don't get it. Most likely these are those that have a hardened heart, so not open, not receptive. And we don't know what calls that, whether that's just the way they are, whether they've had some crazy experiences and the heart of that, but they're not, they, they, they don't hear it. They don't accept it. They don't believe it. And he says the birds come by representing the evil ones. <laughs> they just take the seed away because they've been blinded. They don't understand that opportunity to hear the message is before them, but because of the hardness of their hearts, it's not able to penetrate into that hard, packed soil, their hardened heart. <coughs> the other seed, he says, falls on stony places or in the rocky soil. This soil represents the one who hears the word, they receive it with great joy. It penetrates, it sounds good, it kind of penetrates a little, but it really doesn't take root enough. They're not grounded in the word of God. Maybe they, in, in my mind, I think maybe somebody who attended a, a special service and, and it was moving and it was it was it was it was emotional, and and yet when the problems come, when the difficulties come, they're not able to endure and they stumble. Here we learn that a, a, a simple emotional response, without going deeper and getting a foundation and, and getting those roots deeper, based in the Word of God, creates difficulty. And people will likely go back to what's familiar. So you have a hard path. You have a stony path where they can't take root. And then he describes this thorny path. The third soil. This soil represents those who hear. They go a little bit deeper. They, they take root enough. But they don't have the ability to go any deeper than that. Because the cares of the world, it says... The worries of life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word. In other words, those things, the cares of the world, distract them, move them, discourage them, and they never have a changed perspective. They still begin to worry about life. They fear everything. They, they feel like they don't have enough money. There's not enough money there. They, they want more wealth. And because there's no roots, they don't go deep. The nutrients necessary aren't there to produce any fruit. The thorns kind of choke them off. They become distracted from what is truly important. Getting that maybe godly perspective in a sense, but just not enough. Keeping a worldly perspective on things. But he says other soil is good soil. This soil represents the one who hears and understands the word. They produce a crop. And in that crop, again, some fruit is produced. And the amazing thing about fruit, within that fruit, what's in there? But more seeds. More seeds that can be distributed. We're told it's those, in Luke he's described it as those who have a noble and good heart, who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering, produce a crop. They keep it, and with patient endurance, fruit is produced in their lives. See the importance of, of understanding 
And the results of understanding is that you bear fruit. Now when one understands, we should be then bearing fruit and, and more fruit. The more we understand, the more we desire to have a good and noble heart, the more we're willing to listen and learn. Now this idea of fruit and producing fruit runs through the entire New Testament. And I put some list things out there. Different times fruit is mentioned. What kind of fruit does it mean that you're going to be bearing fruit? What does that mean? Well, sometimes it's, it's just a, a, an amazing ability to win people to Christ, to bring people into relationship to Christ. That the harvest, you, you talk to people on an airplane, and all of a sudden they believe, they accept, that's fruit. For others, it's kind of a, a practical change of behavior, a lifestyle change, a, a more holy living, as we've talked about. For others, it's, it's this desire to take what they have and recognize that what I have is not mine and want to be generous and, and so generous in helping other people. For others, it's, it's the fruit of the Spirit is mentioned. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, goodness, and self-control. For others, it's good works. You, you have this desire to produce fruit by doing good for others. Nobody has to see me. I don't need a pat on the back. I don't need to be appreciated. I'm doing this because I know it's the right thing to do. For others, it's the fruit of praise and thanksgiving. You can worship oh God. And, and people can be around. People don't have to be around. But you can worship God any place, any time. And the worship of God is important to you. Now, an important observation is, not, is that not all who bear the same amount of fruit... And I said before, as we looked at the parables, not to read too much in, but he seems to make a statement there at the end. Some bear 100, some bear 60, some bear 30. Just like with the, the parable of the talents we looked at a, a, a week ago or so. You know, it's not a matter of, of comparing yourself to someone else. We all have different abilities and gifts. In fact, that's exactly what it says in the scripture. In fact, read this verse with me. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To Him be glory and power forever and ever. Now, with the explanation provided by Jesus himself, we probably don't have any problem understanding this parable of, of the sower and the truths, the teachings of Jesus. But again, it's one thing to understand it. I mean, Jesus just explained it. It's another thing to apply that to our lives, to kind of go through that thought-provoking process. You know, what questions do I ask myself from this? A, a few might be, Am I spreading the seed of the gospel? Now, now, it is very interesting. It went everywhere. Even though the ground was hard, it's always an interesting part of the story. I mean, even though the ground was hard, even though Satan, the bird was going to take the seed away, that didn't mean the seed still wasn't provided. The opportunity wasn't there. So, again, the seed went everywhere. Am I spreading the gospel? Am I sharing the love of Christ with others? Am I witnessing to that truth, this good news, that Jesus can forgive their sins, like he's forgiven your sin. That's the outward question to a believer, a follower. But I also could ask a, a, an inward question. What kind of soil are you? Are, are you like the path? You know, you've heard the, the, the message before, but maybe not yet really buying into all this stuff. You're hearing, but maybe not really listening. You, 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 and, and the longer you wait, the problem is the harder it is, the older we get, with all life experiences, the harder it is to hear the truth. I think that's one of the reasons why ministries, churches, do ministry with young people. We want young people to, to have, they have soft hearts, don't they? They can, are receptive to the truth. If you tell, I, I think I shared this before, when I was a child, my dad was a school psychologist, and this will explain a lot. <laughs> my dad told me an apple was an orange. Thought he was being funny. And for the longest time, you know what? I thought an apple was an orange. Why? Because I believed what he said. We have an opportunity to share truth in people's lives, children's lives. But the older we get, the harder it is to hear the truth. Are you like the path? Or are you like the rocky places? 
Maybe there was a, a situation you were in when you were younger and, and there was an emotional response. You gave an remote, emotional response to recognizing who you were and your need for Jesus and forgiveness for your sins. But you never really got grounded. And then when the problems came, you kind of walked away and said, well, that was nice. But you never got rooted in the truth of God and growing in Christ. Or maybe you like the soil that was thorny. You've responded to the gospel one time. You had that emotional response and you began reading your Bible and praying and going to worship. But soon, all of a sudden, because we live in the culture around us, it snuck in and it distracted you. The needs of this world distracted you. The, the wealth of the world distracted you and all the cares. And maybe as a result of that, your roots have not gone deep enough and you're not bearing the fruit that you could be. Or are you like the good soil? You responded to the gospel. You heard it. You've understood it. You have internalized your faith. No one is going to take that away from you. You have made it your own. It's not your parents. It's not your teachers. It's not a friend or a relative. It is your own faith. It came deep into your heart. And it changed your life. And so the word of God has been able to produce its intended effect in you. In you you have been produced fruit. You are, you are fruit being produced in you because now there is more love in you and joy and peace and patience and kindness and generosity and faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. That fruit has been produced in you because you have listened. When Jesus finished this parable, as he did with a lot of the parables, he then made this exclamatory statement. Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. It's exclamatory because it's an exclamation point. That's how he ended. Whoever has ears. By the way, who in the audience has ears? Everybody. We all have ears. In fact, we got two of them, right? To hear better than we speak. We talk about that. Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. Because sometimes it is in one ear and out the other. Or we get distracted. Our minds wander. That's normal. Your minds wander. Something even said here, and all of a sudden you're thinking about something else. That's understandable. That's why you have to say, God, help me refocus. What do I need to hear, God? I want to hear. You have to have a desire to hear. I want to hear. Clearly from this explanation of Jesus himself, we learn that not all those who have ears to hear really listen. So it's important that we listen well when God's word is being proclaimed. That's how faith is obtained. Read this verse with me. Faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. How well are you listening? How well are you listening to the parables of Jesus? Even in his own explanation, what kind of soil are you? Hear, examine, understand, accept the gospel of Christ, the gospel of his kingdom that is in heaven that has come to earth. As Jesus said it, and I don't think it was just true then, but I think because of who he is and what he's done, it's just as true, maybe even more true now. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Amen? Do you bow with me in prayer? Lord God, we do pray that your truth is heard and understood. May it apply to each one of us here, God, who may be watching today, Lord. May, God, your truth about Jesus' forgiveness, his forgiveness of sins, penetrate each heart that he loves. He is love. You are love. Help us in these days as we seek to bear fruit, as we seek to have our roots deep and wide, grounded in your truth and in your love. We pray this in the name of Christ and all God's people say, Amen. 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 We close our time together in worship. I invite you to stand and let's sing this beautiful hymn number 410, I Want a Principle Within.
Ladies, now go forth. Bearing the truth. Spreading the seed of God's truth. Good soil people, go forth and grow in wisdom and knowledge today. Bear fruit and bear it abundantly in your life and through you in the lives of others. Go forth now in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And all God's people say, Amen. 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 God bless you as you go. Hope to see you at the picnic later today. God bless you. You go again.